gives me a great pleasure to introduce t Tim Prevett, who is still photographing us. Um, Tim is a tour guide. It's called History and Mystery Tours. And so he um, is specialises in crew. So if you want to go to a t for a tour of crew, please do. And today he's going to talk about the um, ancient roots of North Wales, which he's also written a book of, which I, I don't have a copy of, any copies of today, but it's a, it's a very good book. It's hard to get hold of, rare in the future. So um, over to you, Tim, and um, the next talk will be at 3pm, so, uh, so um, we're just squeezing a, a quick 10 minute one in there. So thank you very much, Tim. Quickly introduce my, my tour work. It's not just crew I do, I also do Nantwich and I have further tours in development. I do ghost tours of crew and Nantwich centres as well as a strange at crew, um, crew train station ghost tour. Um, in association with Virgin Trains, we have access to some off limits parts of the station. So uh, there are tours for all of those fully bookable now on the internet for the autumn. Uh, for <laughs> For Heritage Open Days, which is a free scheme, a bit like um, the CBA Festival of British Archaeology, I am also doing tours in the centre of Crew. One is a straightforward historical tour. The other one details murders, accidents and prostitution in Victorian Crew. Real grimy uh, celebration. Um, and I am blogging for English Heritage on the Heritage Open Days blog. My first post will go live at the end of next week. I finished it off late last night and submitted it. Um, one of 12 people selected to blog about Heritage Open Days across the country. Uh, I think that's oh and I also have a radio show as well so if any of you want to talk about yeah uh, history and mystery on redshift radio redshiftradio.co.uk it's lis listenable to, again to, for six weeks after broadcast and, and I'm wanting to get more people to speak about um, actual factual historical content as well as more touchy feely experiential aspects of ancient sites which you can't prove but nevertheless form part of our interaction with these places right adverts over on with the talk. So this talk is pretty much based on this book, Roads and Trackways of North Wales. It's published in 2008 by Landmark. Uh, within 10 months of being published, the publisher went bust. Um, they sold the rights to the, pre to the books to the new company which they formed, and then the administrators cleared up on all the royalties. So I've not seen one penny from this book. So, but you can get it on eBay and Amazon. There's usually a few copies floating around on either. So if you like what you hear today, there's an awful lot more. It details the development of trackways in North Wales from prehistory up to Telford turnpikes, drove routes, pilgrimage routes, Roman roads, and so on, uh, from uh, Welshpool to Barmouth northwards. So if you know Wales, that's a pretty big area. Right, getting into North Wales. If you've been to North Wales, you know it's relatively a doddle, okay? You can either wind your way up via Llangollen, uh, there we go, up that way to North Wales, or you can take the A55 along the North Wales route. If it's, there's been no accidents or there's no um, roadworks, it's a doddle. You can be, say, from Chester to a Hollyhead in about an hour and a half plain sailing. Historically, it's been quite a challenge, and people have been travelling across the North Wales landscape for an awful long time, especially from the uh, mainland Britain across to Ireland. Even in prehistory, Neolithic, we have a number of Neolithic passage graves along Anglesey, along the North Wales coast, and there is even a passage grave in what's now Liverpool. We've got the Calderstones in Calderstones Park. They're now inside a greenhouse, but there was a passage grave in Liverpool. So people have been travelling across this landscape for a long time. Challenges are getting into there. Mountains, you've got the deep structures of the landscape which you have to obviously work with. If you've got a great big valley or a mountain or a headland that you're trying to get around it, they are going to dictate the route you take. So you've got the Cluidian range of mountains there, the Vale of Cluid, very nice green area, and then you've got like Hirythog mountains, the Aranigs, uh, Denby Moors, then you go into Snowdonia, um, the Rhinogs, um, where the Barren Mountains, where are they go down? The Barren Mountains, here, there we go. So to get into in and out of North Wales, you have to contend with the landscape. There is no way around it. Some of the challenges, um, I'm jumping around a bit historically, then I'm gonna home in on the pre, a couple prehistoric routes. This, believe it or not, was the 18th century coach route from a place called Croissor to Beth Gellert. So imagine coming along this on horse and trap. This was one of the bridges that you would have gone across. This is the kind of terrain that you would be uh, contending with. 
The mountain passes, obviously if, if the mountains have a narrow neck between them, they are going to form the easiest route of passage for them. This is the Sifnant Pass near between Conwy and Doigavoki, um on the North Wales coast, practically. Uh, this is a from about the 1930s, a similar view of the ancient, well, relatively ancient, um, pass going up through uh, towards Conwy. Looking. Anglesey. Again, people have been visiting Anglesey, as we know, since the Neolithic period. You've got a fantastic array of uh, tombs and settlements uh, on Anglesey. This is the Menai Strait, the body of water which separates Anglesey from North Wales. Uh, until uh, the uh, 1820s, you'd had no way of getting across there until Telford built this. Anglesey is also particularly interesting because it was uh, in times of hardship, it has sourced much of Wales with uh, crops and with livestock. How do you get several hundred, if not a thousand head of livestock across the Menai Strait without any bridges? You'd swim them. So anyway, the con connection with uh, Anglesey had to be made for the uh, developing route between London and uh, on Northern Ireland. Again, the more views of other bridges. This is the Britannia Bridge, C carries the uh, train link. You also have the Conwy River and Estuary. Uh, think of it in terms of a frontier. Once you cross over this from uh, going from east into the west, the terrain becomes suddenly much more demanding, much harder to break. When the Romans were trying to put down the native British, it took them 40, 40 years to finally actually put them down. Four conquests, 40 years. So um, if you could hang out in those mountains, they look after you for a long time. You also have uh, these gorges to cross and the big mountain ranges to traverse. This is a particularly wonderful uh, area. You've got the Carnathai uh, on the North Wales coast there, and you've got the gliders on the left there. This takes you around Telford's route to uh, the approach to Bangor. This is the Lord Penryn's quarry route. Um, if you've been to Penryn Castle, built on the proceeds of slavery, um, Lord Penryn had a quarry up in these mountains, and this was, the, I think, the 18th century route. Looking down the other way, you then had a later turnpike route, which is this one going along there underneath. Okay, Lord Penryn's route was on that side, coming up this Nant Francon, which is a glacial cum, cum. So the uh, turnpike route, and then you had Telford's road built on the side there. So you can see just how much of a revolution Telford's route into North Wales was. Remember, you did not have the Conwy uh, tunnels going under the Conwy estuary until, I think it was even the 1970s, 1980s. Struggling on my date there. And again, this is the, um, a bridge just before that view. And today you can also visit this bridge. You've got the uh, original turnpike road. I had my laser gone. There we go. There it was fading. I'm losing my laser. Okay, finger. Yeah, <laughs> you've got the turnpike route there, Telford's extension there, and if you look there, you can see a much much earlier structure still standing. It's sort of I always see comparisons to Lord of the Rings and the landscapes wherever I go, and this to me like the shrieks are like Khazad Doom, like the bridge of Khazad Doom, like the precipitous bridge. Okay, oh, skipped a couple, and getting across the North Wales landscape. This is the embankment from the mainland of Anglesey across the Holy Island, and again, was one of Telford's um, geniuses of engineering. Development of routes in North Wales obviously goes hand in hand with our ability to manipulate the landscape. Originally, as you probably all know, we were hunter-gatherers, we followed herds across the landscape. Where the herds made their tracks, we would follow them across the terrain. As our technology improved to clear the landscape, we've got a Paleolithic hand axe on the far left, through to ne um, Neolithic hand axes, uh, Mesolithic flint scrapers, and uh, an Iron Age spearhead, all h helping our ability to uh, interact with the landscape. It wasn't until the Neolithic that we actually started settling down, constructing tombs, um, settlements in areas, and saying, like, we have lived here. And then we see our tombs, and then into the Bronze Age, the barrows, the stone circles, and so on. So. Humanity has been moving across Wales for at least 220,000 years. This is Pont Newith, um, sort of just southish of Denby and St Asaph. 
it was actually bricked off, but I'd had a tip off. I said, go to the cave door and have a look carefully at the padlock. And it had been, somebody had gone there with an angle grinder. And you could actually get right in and uh, also close it all up again. So this was where humanity had its first known, I think, uh, dwelling in North Wales, in the limestone caves around Pont Newith. The Mesolithic period, this is the oldest known site in Gwynedd. This is uh, Truin D, overlooking the Irish Sea on Anglesey. There is a Bronze Age cairn circle placed on top of it, but there is Mesolithic activity beneath it. Also, Cursus monuments. There are Cursus monuments throughout North Wales. If you don't know what a Cursus monument is, briefly, it's probably a um, ceremonial processional route across the landscape. Two parallel banks with terminals at the end that resemble long barrows. Uh, they're big. This one is a mile and three quarters along at just north of Stonehenge. Most people go to Stonehenge and never see the Cursus. If you go to Stonehenge, get up onto the Cursus. It's fantastic. It's well worth it. Other routes across the landscape are also where the landscape gives you the easiest uh, way of access. This is up on the Carnethai, and on top of each of these uh, peaks, there is a cairn, uh, a Bronze Age burial monument, similar to a barrow. Up until a certain point, cairn and barrow were used interchangeably. So depending on what period literature you're looking at, it gets a bit confusing. More recently, cairn has been become described as a Bronze Age burial monument, um, well, a burial monument consisting of stones, as a barrow is one constructed of earth or softer materials. So there are a number of cairns, obviously interfered with a lot over the millennia, dotting what would have been a very ancient route, the easiest route across the landscapes. Thinking about ridgeways, if you know the roll right stones in Oxfordshire, Warwickshire border, again, that's situated right along the ancient drove route and, um, and the ancient ridgeway across the, the hump of the hills, the hump of the land. Also, if you get big standing stones slap bang next to a road, then I would suggest that that's indicative that that road has been used for people going past it for a very long time. This is one on Anglesey. Um, on the eastern side, you've got Minith Badavon in the background. Um, sometimes you can drive past the stone and not even know it's there because it's covered in ivy. You think it's a big tree stump. But uh, anyway, as you can see, it's built into the wall next to the road. Into the Iron Age. Uh, the Clwydian Mountains on the east fringe of North Wales form a, a link of Iron Age hill forts. There was a fantastic project done, I think it was earlier this year now, it's called the Hill Fort Glow Project, where they sent flares up at different hill forts to check the visual uh, interlinked um, intervisibility of all the sites. And there's an Iron Age hill fort here, uh, Moila Gaia, next to the main lump of the Clwydian Mountains there. And this would have been one of the passes. Somebody's, I uh, can't remember the gentleman's name, there was a uh, postulated that there would have been a ladder-like uh, procession of roads going north, south, either side of the Clwydian Mountains, one on the, what's now the English side, one on the Welsh side, and where the mountain passes facilitate that would have formed the rungs going between the two. So this is... Well, Ooh, Bulk, Bulkis Pass means pass. Well, if you can get to grips with the Welsh language, it helps unlock a lot of the meaning. It's usually descriptive of the, the terrain or an event that's happened there. Um, so Bulk, B-W-L-C-H. No, it's gone. Uh, I can't. Bulk Penbaras, thank you. So, and um, this is one of the hill forts, Voil Ventley, looking north. And again, you can see the modern paths, but they still form... Um, suggest what would have been there in the prehistoric period. And this is a good walk we had earlier in the year up on Royal Fenley. It doesn't show quite so well, but the, the hill forts, I'm, I'm sure I preached the converted. If you can get and have a good dig around a hill fort, they are vast. They are wonders. Constructing these things without any earth moving equipment, with hand scrapers, with picks made out of antlers. What an investment of labor. They are vast. So anyway, some more pictures from Royal Ventley. And of course, the prehistoric period ends with the Romans. Depending on how you feel, you might kind of feel that the Romans arrived, arrived and spoiled the party. Um, perhaps we were doing just fine without the Romans and we didn't need them. I don't know. Having been as a Roman tour guide in Chester for a number of years, I, I ought not to be too unkind to the Romans. 
So the Romans weren't the first to realize the quickest way to get from A to B was a straight line. Yes, if we are driving down lots of straight roads, we can say, yes, this is a Roman road. I would suggest typically many of them would have been used in use in prehistoric period. The way obviously you're going to find and document it was a, uh, a Roman road is by look, excavating or looking um, at the stratigraphy. This is at the Chester Amphitheatre dig. I was lucky enough to be at, uh, working as a tour guide at the amphitheatre in Chester when he did the dig there a few years ago. So every day it was just like going to work at Time Team. It was fantastic. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I won't repeat that. <laughs> OK, other developments. You have also pack horse bridges. This is a place called Kai Gurley near Wrexham. Um, this is another pack horse bridge down near Machluid. Um, Dinas Mouthy on your way down to Welshpool if you're exiting down in that direction. So writing that book totally revolutionized the way I interact with the landscape because now I, I drive along, I notice sort of turnpike lodges, I notice old bits of road that aren't used anymore, old milestones and things. So obviously the, the post, the London to Holyhead post carriage, the coaching inns that littered away, this is next to the River Conwy, um, some of Telford's lodges and um, turnpikes, and again this is the Tollet Llan via gate, this is very very interesting. Um, I won't read all of it, but uh, it says, for every horse, mule, or other cattle drawing any coach other, or other carriage of springs for sum of four pence. Um, some of the old wagons actually had nails inserted into the rim, so as they went along, they would rip up the road. So if you see wagon or cart, the wheels being less than three inches in breadth or having wheels with tires fastened with nails projecting and not countersunk to pay double toll. So if your vehicle wrecks the road, you pay more. And you've got the uh, Telford's A5 and the modern A5. And notice this is on angle C. This is crossing the Mach, um, Mach Trife Marshes, um, which the Romans, there's evidence of a Roman ride being found around that. I've got to move it because the time's ticking. This is a place called Cerigadridion. Again, this is Telford's A5. Um, Cerigadridion is interesting. So